I've run Google ad campaigns for literally hundreds of businesses over the past 11 years. And I found that most business owners either don't know that you can set up Google ads to specifically generate phone calls, or they do know that that's an option, but they don't know how to set up Google ad call campaigns properly, and therefore they don't get great results. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to set up Google ad call campaigns the right way, so you can generate a ton of high quality phone calls for your business. Okay, so there are two main ways that you can set up your Google ad campaigns to generate phone calls from your prospects. The first is really easy to do, it's the easiest by far, and that's to simply add in the call extension, what's now referred to as the call asset, to your existing ads. So your existing ads on the search network will pop up and you can add in an extension um, that encourages people to give you a call. I'll show you a quick example of exactly what that looks like. So I've just searched for emergency plumber in Google. This ad, this is a regular responsive search ad, has, uh, has popped up and you can see that underneath we've got this call us button. That is a call extension or a call asset. You can see, you know, this functions in a similar way to these down here, a site link extensions. You might be familiar with the various Google ads extensions, what's now called Google ad assets, but I think extensions was a better name because it's more descriptive of what we're actually looking to do here. Now, when you add in the call extension to existing ads, you will get some phone calls, but it should really be seen as like an added bonus because not many people are gonna click on the call us and call the business. They are more likely to click on the actual ad itself. All Google ad extensions operate that way. Most people are gonna interact with the ad itself, click on the headline, and then they'll take the various actions from there. Yes, you'll get a few phone calls, but that's not gonna be um, the main part of it. Now, I do recommend that if your business does want phone calls, now, obviously not all businesses do, they're not set up that way to handle phone calls on an incoming basis from leads. Although if that's the case, you probably wouldn't be watching this video, you probably do want phone calls, then go ahead and add this into your regular search campaigns. Like absolutely, it's a no brainer. But if you really want to drive significant volumes of phone calls from prospects to your business, which can be a fantastic strategy for a lot of businesses, this is not the way to do it. Yes, do this, but there's something else you want to do. And that's to specifically create a Google ad campaign that is designed to generate calls only that only uses a specific type of ad called a called only um, Google ad. And that is very much geared up to get phone calls. And then instead of the phone calls being sort of an added bonus that a small percentage of people do, a much larger percentage of people are likely to actually go ahead and give you a call. And if that's what you want, then that can work really well. We'll discuss later on when you do and don't want to use it and, and how all that works strategically, whether you want to take this option and, and how that impacts your overall Google advertising strategy and the return on investment that you're likely to get. So I am now going to walk you through exactly how to do that, how to set up a Google Ads call only campaign the right way to get you a whole bunch of phone calls. So I'm in an example Google Ad account here. Uh, I'm going to use this to, uh, to walk through the process. So the first thing I want to do is come into overview and then go ahead and click on a new campaign and then obviously new campaign. So the first thing we need to do is select our campaign objective. Like all Google Ad campaigns, I'm going to go ahead and select leads and you need to select leads in order to have the settings that we need to have to create this campaign type as we go through the process later on. So make sure you go ahead and select leads. Okay, and then we get into the conversion goals. Now, this is an example ad account, so there's not everything set up as we would usually have it. And we don't have a phone call conversion action set up. So basically, this Google ad account is not yet set up properly to track phone calls. We need to go ahead and do that. I'm gonna show you how to, to do that. And you can see that in this section here. If you had a phone call based conversion action that you could then optimize this campaign for, that would be great and really important. We need to get that set up. We've just got this book appointments one and that's not what we want in, in this scenario, okay? So to demonstrate this, what you wanna do is just come out of here and then we wanna go into goals and then we're going to click on create conversion action because we need to create the conversion action of people phoning us in order for that to be registered as a conversion and therefore Google can optimize the campaign accordingly. So you've obviously got a few options that come up here. We want to select phone calls. And then from the list down here, we've got three options. We want to track calls from ads using call extensions or call only ads. Absolutely, that's exactly what we want. That's what we've discussed. There are a couple of other options here, things you can do, but that's sort of beyond the scope of this video. So let's go ahead and click continue. Then we need to enter in a conversion name. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this one phone call lead or leads. Value, so how much is each one of these phone calls, each one of these leads worth to your business? This is where it's really helpful to know your numbers. I'll give you an example. Let's say that each customer on average is worth $1,000 to your business. And you know that you convert one in four phone calls on average into a customer. Therefore, each phone call is worth $250 to your business, okay? So we can go ahead and enter in a value here and say, look, each one of these phone calls is worth 250. I mean, I've got pounds because obviously I'm UK based, but 250 in there. And that gives Google more information to be a help optimize 
the campaign. But if you don't have a value, you're not sure, you can just select don't use a value for this conversion action. Then we've got count. So do we want someone that, who calls every time they call to be counted as a conversion action or just the once? Google recommends just the once and that's what I recommend as well. Because if you think about it, if someone calls you up and is in that first phone call a lead, they're inquiring into your services, but then they go and become a customer, they might call you another 10 times over the next however long because they are wanting to know about lead times or availability or they've got questions. You don't want that to count as 10 different leads and therefore Google optimize for that um, person, someone coming back and calling again and again and again. That's, that's not useful. That's, that's not giving Google the data it needs to optimize properly. You want to count that as one lead because it was one lead. They just went ahead and converted and then called you a whole bunch. Then down here, we've got call length. So how long does someone need to be on the phone with you for them to be counted as a lead? The default is 60 seconds, and for the most part, I think that's fine. If you have a business where people can call up and become a lead really quickly, maybe you want to reduce that time frame. Likewise, if someone calls and needs to be on the phone for quite a long time to really be counted as a lead because it's a complex thing and the average phone call length is you know 15 minutes or something like that, then yeah, you might want to increase that time frame. But six seconds is fine. The other stuff, click through conversion window, 30 days, absolutely fine. And attribution data driven, also absolutely fine. So I'm going to go ahead and click create and continue. And then we've got here, phone call lead conversion action is set up. Great. So we've set this up as a conversion action, but there are a couple other points that I really want to highlight here. And you've got these important next steps because you may not have this set up properly. To finish setting up this conversion action, edit the settings of any call extension or call only ad you want to track. So if you already got those created, but you didn't have the conversion action set up, then you're going to want to go in and adjust that. And then we've got a bit more information here. Make sure your call extension or call ad uses a Google forwarding number. If you just go ahead and enter in your phone number, Google's not going to be able to track things like the length of time that someone takes on the phone call to know whether or not they're a lead. They're going to really struggle to track all the data around that phone call because it's your number. What you need is a Google forwarding number. So Google has like a phone number that, that you can use and then the, the phone call will still come through to your number. That's why it's called a Google forwarding number. But it just means that Google is able to therefore track that information and they can track the value of the business and optimize this campaign properly and know all the uh, important information. Okay, so that's just a really important thing um, to note. I'm going to click done. In order to use a Google forwarding number, one thing you need to do is you come into admin and click on account settings. And then you need to make sure that we've got here call reporting that this is turned on. So in this ad account, we've already got it turned on. It says get detailed information about calls you received. You want to make sure that you turn that on. There are some other settings, but these are less important. In this scenario, you're probably not going to use like a third party call provider. You're probably going to use Google's default stuff. So absolutely fine to go ahead and just leave it on and ignore the other stuff. But you do need to make sure that that's on if it is off. Anyway, a little bit of a tangent to make sure we've got the call reporting and Google forwarding number and our conversion action around phone calls all set up, which we now do. So we can get back to our campaign creation process. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new campaign, new campaign leads like we talked about. And then we want to add in that new goal that we just created. So we just created phone call leads as the conversion action that we want this campaign to optimize for. Really important that we add that in. We've got phone call leads. And then we want to delete out, remove the book appointments goal in this place. Now, just, just to clarify, removing this goal from the campaign creation process of this campaign does not remove it from your whole ad account. You might be thinking, oh, no, hang on. I am optimizing for book appointments or whatever it is that you're optimizing for. I can't go ahead and remove that. It's just removing it from this campaign. So don't worry about that. And the reason why we want to remove the others is because we don't want Google to be optimizing for those other things as well. We just want it to optimize, in this case, for phone calls. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Then campaign type, we want to go ahead and use search. And once that's selected, we need to tell Google how we would like to reach our goal. Obviously, in this scenario, it's going to be phone calls. So just make sure you've got the right country code in there and then enter in phone number and then you are good to go. Then I'm going to click continue and then we just need to give this campaign a name. So let's just call this call only campaign uh, search for now. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and click continue. Then we come through to the bidding page. Now the default bidding strategy that Google suggests is conversions. And that's usually what I'd recommend you at least start with. If you have different conversion actions for different types of phone calls, like let's say you were running different types of ads for different types of services and a phone call for one is worth more or less than a phone call for either. So basically you have different conversion values. Some conversions are worth more than others. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm trying to describe it as clear as I can. Then you can go ahead and select conversion value. I doubt that's going to be the case for most people going through this business. So you can just go ahead and select conversions. 
And that's why we went through the trouble of setting up the conversion action and things like that in order for Google to optimize this campaign, optimizing for conversions. So please get us as many phone calls as possible. If we go ahead and change this from conversions to something like clicks, that's not gonna happen properly. And that's obviously not what we want. That's why we took that time to get everything else set up. So I'd recommend optimizing for conversions as Google recommends as well. Customer acquisition, don't worry about that. Bidding for new customers only. I have other videos talking about that, but that's not really something we need to cover in this video here. Right, we go ahead and click next. We come through to the campaign settings. I would actually deselect the search network, Google search network partners. That's not normally something I do with a regular search campaign, but with a call specific campaign, it's really important that the ads are displayed in a format that really encourages the call. Basically, we're gonna use called only ads and it's really important that it's shown that way. When you include some of the search partners, sometimes ads visually look different and therefore, getting people to actually click on it and make that phone call. It's not as seamless, doesn't seem to work as well. So not something I'd normally do, but uh, something that I would do with a call specific campaign. Uh, I'm just gonna hide this. These sort of pop-ups are just coming up, like I said, because this is an example. Google ad account, okay. Then we get into the location targeting settings section. Now I imagine most people going through this video are a business that operates locally and you want to generate phone calls from local prospects and that's absolutely fine. But if you do operate nationally, you can also set up your location targeting that way as well. But I'm gonna demonstrate this as if we are a local business. So if I click on enter in another location, I'm just gonna go into the advanced search and enter in a city. It's relatively close to me in the UK called Bath, actually where I went to university before I um, called it quits early. Anyway, um, so we've got Bath in here. We've just got the city itself. Obviously we could change that to a radius if we wanted to. The location in this case is fine. Just like with all Google ad campaigns when it comes to targeting, target the areas where you think people are likely to either travel to you or you are willing to travel to them. Basically, where can you service your customers? Now, if you've got a different type of business like an e-commerce business and you can advertise nationally, then advertise nationally. It doesn't need to get any more complicated than that. But in this location targeting section, there is a really important point I want to make. And let's go ahead and click on these uh, location options. And that's actually why I used Bath as an example. I'll explain why. The default here is to include people, targeting people, who are present in, so actually in the location you selected, or interested in that location. So people in, regularly in, or who've shown an interest in your included locations. Now, the reason why I chose Bath here is because Bath is a tourist destination in the UK. So there's Roman baths there. That's why it's literally called Bath. So people travel from all over the country, even internationally, to go have a look at it. It's a very pretty place. There's a big abbey and there's Roman stuff. So people travel there all the time and people will be searching for that location a lot. So if we go ahead and leave it as the default, we're gonna have our ads put in front of people that don't necessarily live in and around Bath. And if we're, I used the example earlier, an emergency plumber operating in Bath, we can't work with people that are all over the country, like that's just not feasible. So that would be a waste of money to put our ads in front of those people. So really important that you change to presence. So people in or regularly in your included locations only not including people that are interested in. Like I said, that, that's more of an issue with certain businesses than others. So more of an issue with tourist destinations or places where people travel in and out of for business a lot. You don't wanna be advertising your emergency plumber services um, to someone that lives in another country or a different part of the country just because they visited or even just Googled around about it. Languages, you can obviously enter in languages if that's uh, specific to your business. In this case, you know where we're advertising, it'd be English, that's absolutely fine. Audience segments is not something you need to worry about when it comes to these sorts of campaigns because as a search campaign, our ads are only gonna be triggered when people search for specific keywords related to our products or services. That takes care of a lot of the targeting side of things. Okay, and then we've got this broad match keyword section. I'm gonna turn that off. So this here is basically the default is that all the keywords within the campaign are gonna be broad match. I don't think that's good, particularly for call only campaigns. And we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but with call only campaigns, what you tend to find is that the quality of the leads that come through are higher, but they are more expensive to advertise to, both on a CPM basis and, and on a CPC basis. So you need to be more specific with who you put your ads in front of, not less. So I think I'm primarily gonna focus on exact match keywords when we go through. So definitely turn this off for now. Right, more settings. There's not a huge amount we need to do in here. I'm not gonna go through all of them. We can leave a lot of this stuff as, as the default. But one thing that is really important and worth noting is ad schedule, okay? So if you're gonna have prospects calling your business, 
Maybe you are happy to receive phone calls 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Some businesses will be geared up for that, exactly. A lot won't. A lot won't want phone calls, particularly if it's like forwarding to your mobile number at three in the morning. So there's a good chance you're going to want to set a schedule. And often when we're running call-only campaigns for clients, we would be looking at like a typical nine to five or something similar. You know, it might be it might be a little bit wider. That might be an eight to six, um, depending on when you have available. Well, I have put eight a.m. to six a.m. That's not going to work. Eight a.m. to six p.m. So obviously, it depends on when you have availability. When you have people that are there, ready to receive these phone calls and deal with these prospects, you don't want to be generating phone calls at a time when you can't pick up the phone. Okay, and then once we've added in our ad schedule, go ahead and click next. Now we've got keyword and asset generation. So let me show you how this works, right? So I'm just gonna enter in the URL of my website now. Now this is the website for my digital advertising agency. So the information that Google has just grabbed from the website and entered in here, what makes your products and services unique, that's just pulled from our website and it's about our Facebook, Google advertising done for you services. So that's not gonna work for the example that we're using, which is an emergency plumber. But you want to go ahead and do this, enter in that, and then click generate, and Google will automatically generate for you keywords, ads, things like that. Now, a lot of their suggestions aren't good, but some of them are. And I think it makes perfect sense to click generate, let Google do some of the heavy lifting. You just need to go through, delete out the ones that aren't good, and leave the ones that are good, and then go on from there. I'm gonna click skip because this wouldn't make sense given the example and the example website I've used. Hopefully that makes sense, okay. Then we get into the ad group. So we need to set up our keywords and our ads here. So we've got these two options at the top here where we can re-enter in a URL, if you hadn't previously, and get some keyword suggestions specifically, or we can enter in a specific product or service because I can't enter in the URL because the things wouldn't match up. We can enter in, for example, emergency plumber in here, and Google is going to make some suggestions for us based on emergency plumber of keywords that we might want to target. So we can see we've got a whole bunch of options in here. Now I'm not going to go into depth on keywords here and do a full keyword tutorial because I mean that would add an extra hour plus to this video and this video is already going to be a long one. I have already created a full Google Ads keyword tutorial. Link is in the video description. You can click on that and find out more about keywords, how you want to choose them, all that sort of stuff. Everything you want to know about keywords is in there. I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and delete out a bunch of these and just leave the top two because they're absolute no-brainers if we're an emergency plumber and we wanted to advertise to people searching for emergency plumbers in the area. I'm also just putting square brackets around these to make these exact match. Like I said, when it comes to call-only campaigns, they typically cost more in order to get an interaction and engagement from a customer, but they do convert better. It's perfectly possible for phone calls from Google Ad Campaign to convert at 50%, sometimes even higher. Whereas if you're getting people to fill out like a contact form and become a lead that way, the chances that you're gonna get conversion rates of 50% or more are basically zero. You're likely to have conversion rates far smaller than that. So it's fine to pay more for these leads because they convert better. But I do think that means that you want to be more specific with your budget and more specific with the various um, searches that cause your ads to be shown. That's why I want to use exact match. So we turned that off the broad match across the whole campaign earlier. And then we need to further specify this keyword stage exact match. So I've got these two keywords for now. Normally I'd have more, but you can find out more information about um, keywords. I'll also include in the video description a link to another video about keyword match types, the difference between exact match, phrase match, broad match. I just sort of briefly explained some of it, that exact is, is the, the narrowest, the most specific, and that's what you want to use here. But, um, but you can check that out if you aren't familiar with match types and, and how they work. Google's not going to like this. It's going to tell me to do all sorts of things like you know, upgrade your keywords to broad match because they want your ads to show for more searches and therefore they have more data and make more money and all that sort of stuff, but that's not necessarily what we want as advertisers. Okay, so we're gonna leave that as for now. And then we get into the ad section. Now Google here created a call ad for us, which is exactly what we want, and that's based on the settings that we used earlier on within the uh, campaign creation process, which is fantastic. And then we need to create our new call ad, right? So just make sure you've got the right country code selected in there then enter in your phone number. And if I hover over this, it will see, you can just explain how this works. It's enter the phone number you'd like to show in your ad. So this would be your business's phone number, the phone, the, the number that you would like the phone calls to come through to. So you wanna display that. Now, the way it works, when someone actually clicks on that to call, it'll go through the Google forwarding number and then obviously be forwarded onto yours. So that's how Google's able to grab the information. But what will be displayed and shown in your ad is your phone number, which you want, because that's gonna have like your area code, so we will know that you're local and, and that sort of thing. So just go ahead and enter in there. 
final URL, you still need a URL to actually send people to a location. So that's going to be um, your website. So you can pop those in there. Then you want to add in um, your headlines. Just like with the keywords, I'm not going to go through exactly how to write headlines and uh, descriptions and all that sort of stuff because I've got another video, more than one video on exactly how to do all those sorts of things. I'll include links in the video description for how to write great headlines and all that sort of stuff. What we can see on this over here is, is how different a call ad looks. So you can see we've got call the phone number, you know, business name, and that really encourages people to call more than just having that little call only extension, right? So, you know, if we just put in some examples here, just for demonstration purposes, we've got like emergency plumber, you know, one hour response time. Maybe the business is called emergency plumbers in Bath. Ah, too many. Let's just do Bath. Emergency plumbers Bath. You know, remember that's where we were advertising on our location, emergency plumbers Bath. And then you can add in some descriptions around whatever it is you want to do. Like I said, I've got links in the video description to more information on how to write ad copy and how to write ad copy that converts well. And you can go through those to, to fix these up. You can see that the format of this ad is quite different as well in terms of like headlines and, and how it's displayed and stuff like that. Anyway, then we get down to this conversion action. Oh, just double check to make sure call reporting is turned on. We need that for this to work. And then we've got conversion action. So the default is use account settings. So calls from ads, what we're optimizing for calls from ads, or we can specifically specify that phone call lead that we wanted earlier. That's going to be more important if you have different types of calls from ads, like different phone call options, like we talked about if you're advertising different services and each phone call for a service is a goal and a separate conversion action. And you want to do that because different phone calls are worth different amounts for your business. If one service is worth $1,000 when you sell it, another service is worth $5,000 when you sell it. Well, calls for each of those aren't equally valuable. So you want to be able to set these up and, and enter it here. So you could specifically specify, no, no, I don't just want you to generate calls. I want you to generate this conversion action right here. Okay. Hopefully that's not too complex and makes sense. Okay, then we can go ahead and click done. And we've got that first ad created. We can go ahead and click next. And Google's going to give budget recommendations. We can obviously change this. Google often tries to convince people to spend a bit more than they're comfortable with to start with. I have other videos about budgets and what it is that you can start to, to spend with. You know, they've got 47, 49 here. I mean, fine, whatever. That, that is what I could use. But my general recommendation with budgets is start with something that is small enough where if you lose it, if it doesn't work out initially, which is always possible with a new campaign, it's not gonna you know, ruin you or your business financially. You don't want the stakes to be that high initially. Start small and scale from there, but don't spend so little that it doesn't mean anything. There's normally a sweet spot where it's like, we could lose this, but it would sting a little bit. That's, that's the sweet spot I normally find. I'm just gonna go ahead and click next with this. Okay, and then Google's gonna take a second to uh, check through our campaign like they do with all campaigns. Now, because this is just an example campaign they've put together and didn't, fill out the ad information properly. We've got fix your ad, your ad has issues. It wants more information in the ad. We didn't even enter in URLs, for example. <laughs> um, so it's not gonna let me actually go ahead and publish this, but you should see something like this. You can just run through the various settings, make sure you've got them correct as we've discussed, and then go ahead and click publish. Google will take a bit of time to review the ads and then you will be good to go and hopefully start generating a ton of high quality phone calls very quickly. Now, there are a few other things that I want to discuss when it comes to Google Ads call campaigns that you need to think about and, and do slightly differently. Before I do, I just want to quickly let you know about our done for you Google Ads services. Now, if you've been through that, you're thinking that seems really difficult and complicated. I just want a business to do this for me, get me all the results so I can focus on other parts of my business. That's exactly what my agency does. We create, manage and optimize Google Ad campaigns for clients. We can take this workload off your hands, most likely help you get much better results than if you are doing it yourself. If you are interested in that, there is a link in the video description below. You can click on that, come through to our website, book in a call with one of my team members and find out more about our service. No obligation, of course, just fairly relaxed, but you can find out more about how we might be able to help and do this for you. Okay, so let's run through um, some important things when it comes to call-only campaigns. They're a bit different to regular other types of, of Google campaigns, even ones that are on the search network, okay? So it's really important that you don't compare cost per phone call, cost per call to your regular lead costs. Like we discussed earlier, you are likely to convert much better from a phone call, particularly if your service, to some extent maybe your product, if, you, if you're running call campaigns for a particular type of product, I have seen that done. Particularly if there's an element of like urgency to it, like someone wants the service really quickly. Like I used the classic example of emergency plumber. 
I've got a leak, I've got a blocked something, I need a plumber right now, this is a disaster, then the conversion rate when you speak to someone on the phone will be way higher than someone clicking through to your website, filling out a contact form and then, then being able to go on. So don't compare the two. What you want to compare is the overall cost to acquire a new customer. Okay, so if it costs you three times as much to get a phone call as it does a contact form submission, you know, they're both leads, but the phone call converts at four or five times as much as the contact form submission, well, the phone call still produced a lower cost per new customer acquired, okay? Something to, to really think about as you're going through and when you're factoring in um, your data. Call-only campaigns also aren't for every business. For some, they work really, really well. So if the prospect needs to hire you urgency, like we've already discussed, or any business where your prospects have quite a lot of questions, like they want to speak to someone, they want to get a sense of like, how does this work? I'm not really familiar with the process. Big considered purchases, things where people do want to think about it, ask more information before they're ready to proceed. Perhaps the sort of thing that people buy that they're not used to buying, like a one-off purchase is quite significant. And also call campaigns tend to work better when the target audience is an older demographic. Younger generations are just less willing to pick up the phone and want to speak to people. It's just like a generational cultural thing. They're more likely to be a bit more apprehensive on the phone and want to more fill out a contact form and a lot of business owners watching this will think that's so silly because we're used to being on the phone all the time and having difficult conversations and sales calls and da, da 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 But that is true. Like that is a thing. If you're targeting a younger demographic, then call campaigns may not be um, the best way to go. We have also found that call campaigns typically don't perform best for businesses where they're selling something, where their target market are very much price shopping and there's a lot of readily available information online. So if people are comparing the features of a certain product or they're weighing up which is the cheapest service and they're willing to look at a whole bunch of different options. Cool campaigns typically don't perform as well as other campaigns. But as I said, if you meet some of those other criteria, cool campaigns can, can work really well. And if you are unsure, you can always give this a go, give this a quick test, see which performs best for your business and then adjust otherwise. We have seen businesses that have only been focused on sort of regular search campaigns, sending people through to their website a lot, switch to a primarily cool campaign structure where they're using call ads trying to get as many calls as possible and it's been absolutely fantastic for the business it's also saved a lot of admin time because it's typically these businesses are typically going to be like trades related contractor star businesses and they're out and about doing jobs if they can quickly pick up the phone speak to a new prospect that's just a much more efficient way for them to do business and they convert a lot better which is um, obviously really important now, if you do decide to give Google Ads call-only campaigns a go, and if your business meets some of those criteria I mentioned previously, absolutely do it. It could be game-changing. And if you, you do do that and you find that you are generating these phone calls, but they're not as high quality as you'd like them to be. Slow, slow down, slow down. What are, what are you talking about? They're not as, not as accurate. Like, let's say you're getting calls through from people, but you can't actually serve them. They're not quite right. The answer to that typically is your negative keyword list. You need to build out an extensive negative keyword list. And if you aren't familiar with exactly how to do that and the various places to find negative keyword options and, and how to do that well, I strongly encourage you to check out this video because in that video, I go through the entire process of how to build out a negative keyword list, how to find great options to prevent your ads from being shown to searches that are unlikely to convert, which at the end of the day is wasting money. So with a great negative keyword list, you save money and it's even more important for call-only campaigns. So go ahead and check this out.